Nikhalid is a city approximately located 45 kilometers from Tunis at the center south of Kabon, near the hills of Grombelia, a location known as the Dakhla. Nikhalid is known for its citrus farms and historically well known for its agricultural dynamic. Before the French occupation, it had olive farms, grains, and many other farming produce, such as the famous pomegranate of Nikhalid. As for the history of Nikhalid, settlements in the whole region date back to antiquity during the Punic period around 4th and 3rd century BC. The whole Kabon was of great importance, especially cities that existed back then, such as Neapolis today, Nabil and Libya. Both cities had important agricultural dynamic and residences for the wealthy from Carthage. The city had three main roads. First road connected Carthage to Hadramount, today Sousse. Second road was a seafront crossing Slimane and Corbus all the way to City David. Third road leads to Hamamet. When Carthage fell in 146 BC, the region was destroyed and witnessed military campaigns by the victorious Roman army. Land ownership were transferred to new Roman settlers. Archaeological findings at the historical city of Shul near Bni Khaled dates back to year 32. Most important finding is a white marble statue of a person holding an arrow. The statue is incomplete, but it seems that the person is sitting on a throne with lions protecting them. In the Middle Ages, Gabon was called the Island of Shriek, after Shriek Lapsi, who was the first Islamic ruler of the region. After the Islamic conquest entered Africa and won the Battle of Spitla, the Byzantines moved to Gabon and probably passed Nikhaled and other cities on their way to Libya, where they boarded their ships and escaped. From the early 8th century till mid 9th century, Gabon was well populated with many cities, with a capital known by the name of Manzil Beshu. Traveler Tijeni describes this, the island of Shriek as having many regions where most important was Manzil Beshu, which was described as a big city with a mosque and many busy souks. Today, historians do not agree where Manzil Beshu is, but some say it was today Manzil Buzalfa. If this is true, then Nikhaled was within geographic area of region's capital as an independent city or maybe part of it. In mid-11th century, Menzel Beshu faced destruction and looting by Bani Hilal, and this is why we could trace the city name to Wilet Khalid or Bani Khalid, which is a tribal branch of Bani Hilal that still exists until today at the Egyptian town of Bani Khalid. In the 11th century, the city was most impacted by the destruction that covered the whole region and did not prosper until modern times around the second half of the 18th century. People of Bani Khaled come from diverse backgrounds, but many have Arabic origins, either moved with the first Islamic conquests or during the Bani Hilal invasions. In 12 May 1881, Muhammad al-Sadaq, the Bey of Tunisia, signed the French Protection Treaty under which the country became a French colony. In early 20th century, the city planning was based on the central mosque and the old Medina, which was demolished early 60s to enlarge the road to Grombelia, build a post office and a central market. Nikhaled's situation worsened at the time where it was the scene for many World War II battles in Tunisia in 1943 after the Axis forces composed of German and Italian army took over Tunisia. Nikhaled and its surroundings was where Axis Forces Army chose to settle. From April to May 1934, Allied forces led by the USA launched battles to regain the Kabon, where many strikes were on Nikhaled. Four B-25 Mitchell took off from Sfax 23 April 1943 between 15.05 and 6 a.m. to bomb Nikhaled, where there was many civilian casualties and many material and farm damage. As many Tunisian cities, Bni Khaled was part of the national resistance against the occupation. In 1934, the first cell of the Free Destorian Party was launched, and its members grew over time as a result of its continuous activities. It contributed to nationalism development through the initiation of associations such and organizations such as ESPK, the Toile Sportive de Bni Khaled, which was initiated in 1949, 
and the Tunisian Red Crescent branch in 1943, which improved healthcare awareness, as well as the Association of Beni Khaled Youth in 1943, which supported students from Beni Khaled that went to the Tuna Mosque to study. In 1949, the leader Habib Bourguiba visited Beni Khaled to spread nationalism and incite citizens against the French colonists. In 1951, the national leader Munjislim visited the town where a large popular gathering was organized to encourage fighting the occupation by all means. All these activities got a great response from the people of Michalé, which were the first to take part in the armed resilience against the occupier, which started in 1952. On the 23rd of January 1952, people's anger mounted. A general strike took place in the town and main roads were closed. Around 2 p.m., a French guard car crossed the town. Stones were thrown at them by demonstrators. The guards tried to capture stone throwers. At that time, a bullet was shot in the direction of Regent's Guard Commander Fache, and he was hit in his right lung. Shooting continued as the guards tried to pull away his body. Following this incident, Nikhaled faced a punishment campaign. On the 26th of January, the city town was surrounded and wooden stalls installed at the center of town were just on the 20th of March 1956, Tunisia gained its independence. La France reconnaît solennellement l'indépendance de la Tunisie. On the 12th of September 1958, the municipality of Beni Khaled was founded and since the town witnessed many important historical milestones. Today, Beni Khaled faces many socio-economic challenges, just as other Tunisian towns, as a result of political and economic transformation. Beni Khaled today needs a new strategic outlook and needs to come to terms with its own history and beautiful surroundings. Nevertheless, Beni Khaled remains Tejad Dakhla, land of generosity, bringing serenity and peace to its inhabitants, welcoming visitors from everywhere.